Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. Welcome back to another edition of Capital Connection. Fridays during the Noon Report, we give you direct connection to what's happening in Albany and Harrisburg with the experts on the issues at the state capitals. They are Michael Gear of the Pennsylvania Family Institute and Jason McGuire with New Yorkers for Constitutional Freedoms. Jason, I'll begin with you talking politics. Of course, next week is primary day, June 23rd. And some voters in New York's 27th Congressional District are going to be making a little history here. They will be voting in not one, but two congressional elections on the same day. How is that possible? Well, you know, what happened was, uh, like many other things in life, the pandemic has caused changes. And so originally there was supposed to be just a special election to fill the remainder of former Representative Chris Collins' uh, term, which ends this year. And then there was going to be a Republican primary for the new term. But things got condensed, and now on Tuesday, June 23rd, voters in the 27th will be picking a candidate for the special election to fill out the rest of this year, and then a candidate to represent the party on the November ballot. Uh, it's very possible that we end up with two different candidates in these two elections on this one day. But voters should remember that, that primaries are about picking your preferred candidate. Sometimes we play head games. We try to figure out which candidate we think can win this or that. This is the time for people to identify the candidate that best represents their values. And that candidate will hopefully represent them for years to come. All right. And while we're giving out dates on uh, this past Monday, Michael, June 15th, an historic ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court, um, the vote 6-3 to three in favor of transgender rights in the workplace has a lot of people talking even still several days later. Um, um, your thoughts on this ruling, uh, the vote maybe by Neil Gorsuch caught a lot of conservatives by surprise, and the impact this will have on Pennsylvania. Well, the ruling really was uh, less a ruling and more a legislative action. The court uh, was once again legislating from the bench. This has been uh, historically things that we've seen in very tragic decisions over the years. Roe versus Wade was legislating from the bench. Uh, Obergefell, which... Uh, legalized so-called same-sex marriage, was legislating from the bench, and we did not expect this from Neil Gorsuch. Now, the impact on Pennsylvania, we in, in Pennsylvania, with the help of our supporters and constituents all across the state, have resisted uh, changes to the laws in Pennsylvania that would add special protections for people based on their sexual orientation, gender identity, because of the impact on religious liberty, because of the impact on personal privacy in school locker rooms, etc., and with what the Supreme Court has done here, it puts all of that in challenge and really creates more opportunity and more challenges for lawyers to be engaged in the courts with more litigation. It's very challenging. And uh, Christian ministries, especially, I think, are, to, are going to be under the gun. And your Independence Law Center will be staying pretty busy, I'm sure, as a result yes. of this decision. A significant uh, Republican congressional primary uh, also happening next week in uh, the 22nd congressional district. Jason, explain this race between George Phillips, who's no stranger to this process, and former Congresswoman Claudia Tenney. Yeah, this is a race where, uh, again, and this is a situation where this district tends to go back and forth, back and forth. This is a race that will come down to two conservatives that are challenging one another in the primary. But their tone and their tenor is very different. Uh, the former representative, Claudia Tenney, tends to be more um, bombastic in how she um, handles herself. And she is uh, definitely a President Trump supporter. George Phillips is as well, but he tends to be more meek in his approach to things. He's more of a policy guy. And so what's going to happen in this race is it's going to come down to what do the voters want? Do they want the personality that is forcefully and loudly going to challenge or someone who will quietly get the job done? Mm -hmm. And whoever wins that race will face uh, Representative Brindisi in the November election. All right. A big story this week out of Harrisburg, Michael. Uh, impeachment talk heating up again. Uh, Representative Metcalf, who's been down this road before, getting 24 other House Republicans uh, to sign on to this effort to oust the governor. Explain what that was all about. Well, I think a lot of Pennsylvanians will instantly understand what it's about, and it's about the actions of the governor during the COVID crisis. The 
articles of uh, impeachment uh, that Representative Metcalf has put forth. I deal with several issues, including um, the business closure and stay-at-home orders, which the representative says violates citizens' constitutional rights. He talked about the lack of transparency with the governor. He has not collaborated with the legislature in any way. Uh, the uh, issues related to the unemployment compensation system, which has just not been able to deal effectively with the numbers of claims that have come in. There are still people who filed for co- uh, compensate, unemployment compensation claims that still have not received anything from the state. And then uh, the whole debacle related to the nursing homes, very similar to what happened in New York State with ordering COVID-positive patients from hospitals back into nursing homes, which spread the disease and ultimately spread death. Yeah, of course, the other big story in both states is is this uh, effort to enact police reform. The governor, uh, Jason, has signed several executive orders. Why not go through the state legislature? They were in town anyway uh, to get these measures accomplished. Why do it through executive fiat? Yeah, it was interesting listening to Michael just talk about the situation in Pennsylvania because it really is a mirror image of what's happening in New York with one big exception. We don't have impeachment in New York, so we don't have impeachment proceedings against a governor. But the police reforms are another extension of the emergency powers. It is a, it is how the governor is now ruling in New York State rather than working collaboratively with the legislature and with a system of checks and balances by fiat, by executive order. Um, he just continues to write one after another. And at some point, uh, there needs to be a restoration of liberty and a return to constitutional checks and balances. Yeah, those nursing home deaths in New York as well. A sticky wicket for the governor, kind of uh, walking a fine line on that one. Michael, let's head back to Harrisburg. Of course, uh, Mike Terzai gave his farewell speech early this week. Who's next in line to replace him as speaker, do you think? Who looks good to you? Well, it's pretty firm that that choice is going to be Representative Brown. Brian Cutler from Lancaster County. He's a good friend of the Pennsylvania Family Institute, solid Christian. Uh, he will be uh, the first uh, central Pennsylvania lawmaker to become Speaker of the House in decades and also uh, is the uh, got to that seat the fastest of any legislator except one in the history of the Pennsylvania General Assembly. He's been a legislator for 13 years, so it's a rapid rise for him. Very pro-life, and uh, we're excited to be working with him as he becomes speaker. We got word of a lawsuit this week over COVID-19. The governor, the mayor of New York, Bill de Blasio, and the attorney general, Letitia James, all being sued by a handful of religious leaders, some of them upstate, others in the city, uh, over their handling of this crisis. Jason, if you would explain what that lawsuit entails. Yeah, this is a a suit being brought by the Thomas More Society, uh, which are great defenders of religious liberty. Uh, They essentially are saying that if the governor can send representatives to a large protest, to speak at a large protest of 5,000 people in Brooklyn. Um, If restaurants can be at 50% capacity, why are churches limited to only 25%? And this, again, is that restoration of liberty that I'm talking about. Uh, There's a period of time in a pandemic where there's been an emergency order, but now it is time to start taking back... um, those liberties that were lost. And and this is uh, hopefully a case that will do that. Now the cancel culture guys, uh, revision history alive and well uh, in the aftermath of the George Floyd tragedy. Um, We're seeing statues come down all over the country. Uh, There is an ordinance, Michael, in South Philly to protect a statue of Christopher Columbus. He seems to be a popular target, too, these days. Uh, For how long will that ordinance last? Your thoughts overall on this this cancel culture? I mean, they're even canceling shows like Cops on TV for crying all night. Well, even uh, this morning in our staff meeting at the Pennsylvania Family Institute, we were praying for a couple uh, that are, are facing a particular person who's facing a job loss as a result of a Facebook, an innocuous Facebook post that uh, his wife had put on, and his employer's demanding that he apologize for something his wife posted, again, that any of us could have posted. It's not anything egregious at all, but that cancel culture is even coming for people's jobs. Yeah. But when we see the statues being torn down, et cetera, and sort of mobs demanding it rather than due process, it creates a dangerous atmosphere for this country, and you wonder how we're going to sustain. Now, in Philadelphia with this Christopher Columbus, I don't know how long that's going to last because the the mayor of Philadelphia is pushing hard to get that statue taken down out of South Philadelphia. All right, and that will have to be the last word this week. But, hey, get your hands on that voter guide put out by New Yorkers for constitutional freedoms. Jason, where can they find that? 
albanyupdate.com. And stay informed on all the issues out of Pennsylvania as well, Michael. What's your website, sir? pafamily.org. 